Okay, Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, just got out of the screening yeah, about 20 minutes ago or so. Uh, okay, so first things first, um, some really unique things at the beginning of the movie. Uh, during the uh, the Marvel logo, they actually played the, the classic Spider-Man song, you know, the Spider-Man, Spider-Man, a uh, little bit there. Um, it's then that we see... Uh, kind of in the wake of the Avengers. Uh, basically, it goes right after the Avengers. Um, and you see Adrian Toomes, and he's like a head of a construction company. They're doing a lot of cleanup from the Chitauri attack and everything. And it's then that uh, he gets approached by a politician played by Tyne Daly. Uh, Adrian Toomes is Michael Keaton. And she says, you're off the job. You're being replaced by this new company. It's founded by Tony Stark, and it's called Damage Control, uh, which, uh, if you're not aware of that, uh, Damage Control was a thing in uh, Marvel Comics in the 90s. Uh, it was created by the late Dwayne McDuffie, and that was a thing, like, it was a team of guys who basically went in after superhero battles and did all the, cleaned up all the collateral damage, so it's a nice little reference to that. And that's basically the impetus for uh, Tombs to become the Vulture. Uh, that's... What he does basically throughout the whole film is he starts stealing a lot of the... He steals some Ultron tech, he steals some Chitauri tech. Uh, it basically steals as much as he can from damage control. And then he refigures it. He has a crew and they refigure it into weapons and sell them on the black market. Uh, one of his lackeys calls himself the Shocker. Uh, he acts up a little bit. Uh, Spider-Man breaks up a, an attempted arms deal that the guy was involved in and he uses it in public. So. It's alerted everyone to the presence that this is going on now, and uh, Toombs accidentally kills him. He won. He thought he was using an anti-gravity gun instead. He used a uh, basically it was like a pulse rifle on him and killed him. And after that, uh, a new guy becomes the Shocker. Uh, that's the uh, the African American guy. I, they don't really name him at all. Um, and then another one of his lackeys is Mac Gargan. Uh, again, if you're familiar with Spider-Man comics, you know that Mac Gargan becomes uh, the Scorpion. So, yeah, <laughs> there's some uh, neat universe building in there, too. Uh, basically, uh, after that, we get a brief opening credit sequence, and then uh, we get we jump to kind of modern day-ish. Uh, it's basically the events of Civil War, except it's told through the perspective of Peter Parker doing a uh, cell phone vlog diary basically of the whole thing and uh, he's with Happy Hogan the whole time and Happy's kind of say like you know you can't reveal this you know I was like yeah but I'm doing it because it's fun and then you see basically everything from his perspective and, and the whole events of the uh, the fight at the uh, the airport from Civil War from well from the perspective of the camera uh, and then afterwards you see the scene with uh, Tony Stark and Peter Parker in the car Tony tells him to keep the suit, and, you know, the whole hugging thing that you see uh, in the trailers and everything. At that point, uh, we jump ahead a few months after that. Uh, Peter is trying to, you know, he's constantly keeping in contact with Happy Hogan, asking, like, hey, does Tony Stark need me for anything? Like, I'm going out, I'm doing all this stuff, I'm keeping a record for you, and uh, basically he's not paying attention at all. <laughs> Happy's not paying attention to him at all. Peter starts kind of feeling neglected, and it's then that he breaks up the bank robbery uh, that's actually done by uh, the various tombs lackeys. Um, in the midst of that, he gets into it. One of them fires a gun at Peter, and it winds up blowing up the delicatessen across the street that uh, Peter was frequenting a lot. Anyway, um, it's at that point that Peter Parker gets home and his friend Ned, uh, who's the large fellow, I, I know there was a character from the Ultimate Spider-Man comics who's actually friends with Miles Morales, uh, that everyone thought it was, but no, it's, uh, it's, I believe it's Ned meant to be, Ned, bleh, sorry, meant to be Ned Leeds, who's a longtime Spider-Man comic character, but you don't, I don't think they ever use his last name. Uh, there actually are a few other, uh, references, um, at, uh, Peter's High School, uh, they have a TV station set up there with student news and everything, and one of the reporters there is named Betty Brandt. Uh, except she's a blonde, not a brunette like she is in the comics. Um, after that, anyway, you see Peter in his high school, and he's, you know you get that he's sort of the loser and the outcast. Uh, Flash Thompson is actually shown to be rather intelligent in this. He's not as intelligent as Peter, but 
Uh, he's not quite the dundering doof that he is in the comics. Um, they, he's not. You don't see him as an athlete, but it's possible that he is. They don't really state. Uh, though they, Peter is on the academic decathlon team with him, uh, along with Peter's love interest, Liz. Uh, you think is Liz Allen, but we'll get to uh, the big revelation there. And uh, the Zendaya character is named Michelle, but she goes by MJ. So, no, she's not Mary Jane, but she is MJ. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, don't know if that was maybe a last-minute change or anything like that. Anyway, um, when Peter Parker comes home after the bank robbery incident, his friend Ned is waiting there and sees him in the Spider-Man outfit. And uh, kind of some hilarity ensues after that. Like, oh, you know, he starts asking him all these questions and... Basically, Peter tries to let him along as much as he can. Uh, they wind up getting invited to a party because uh, Ned blurts out that Peter knows Spider-Man. Uh, and Liz winds up inviting them to a party at her house. Uh, however, Peter gets called away from the party because well, he sees people testing, and that's where he breaks up the arms deal that winds up killing the original Shocker, basically. Uh, but, and throughout this, uh, Tony Stark, like, Peter has his first encounter with the Vulture, actually. Uh, he swoops in, he p takes Peter up to a great height and drops Peter into a river. I don't know if it's the Hudson River. I think it was the Hudson River. I'm sorry, my knowledge of the landscape of New York is not very good. I've never been to New York, so. But he drops Peter into the river, uh, and the Iron Man suit, not Tony Stark. He, he, Tony Stark is actually in India. He's remote controlling the Iron Man suit saves him, and this is where he gives him the whole, you know, we need you to kind of be the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. We need you to take care of the small things. Leave the big things to the Avengers. But Biro still wants to kind of prove himself, and he finds a damaged uh, weapon from the deal. And instead of calling it into Happy Hogan, he takes it back. He starts doing some tests on it. Uh, in the midst of this, uh, the Shocker manages to track down the weapon because Peter takes uh, the Thing to school. Just a sec here. And Peter manages to hide, uh, you know, the Shocker manages to track it down, and Peter manages to hide just long enough to get a spider tracer on the Shocker. And kind of in the midst of this, they find he's going to Maryland. Well, the academic, the national champions for the academic decathlon are in Washington, D.C. And so Peter basically uses that to get to Washington, D.C. Uh, he then sort of abandons the team and takes everyone off. But they wind up winning the decathlon, the championship anyway. And they go to the Washington Monument to celebrate. And uh, basically, P sorry, I'm getting all over the place. I'm trying to be less blow-by-blow on blow these things. I'm sorry. So I'm trying to be as condensed down as I possibly can. Anyway, uh, the night before the decathlon, he sneaks out of his hotel room and tries to break up a heist. Uh, he fights the Vulture a little bit, and he gets knocked out. Uh, Vulture does not get away with anything, though, so he gets knocked out, and the truck winds up going to the damage control sub-basement, and he winds up getting locked in there. Well, a little bit before this, he and Ned hack the suit, and they drop a lot of the safety protocols that... Uh, Tony Stark had installed, and because of that, Peter now has a guidance computer. Uh, it's basically it's Friday from Avengers: Age of Ultron, uh, the the new Jarvis, basically. Uh, he winds up naming uh, Friday Karen in that. Anyway, uh, while in uh, that damaged warehouse vault. Uh, Karen reveals that what Peter has from that piece of the damaged weapon he found is a Chitauri energy core. And if it gets exposed to radiation, it becomes uh, explosive, basically. Well, Ned has it in his backpack, and they take it through the security system at the Washington Monument, where it gets x-rayed and thus becomes explosive. And it, the explosion goes off in the elevator, and that's where you have the whole scene at the Washington Monument where Peter is rushing to save uh, everyone, which he does. Um, after that, they return back. Peter's kind of, is like, he's really kind of 
pumped now from this. It's like, I can't do anything wrong. I'm going to go after the vulture now. And so he manages to track down a deal. Uh, he tracks down uh, Donald Glover's character. Uh, Donald Glover's appearance very early in the movie. That was also part of the, uh, the deal with the shocker that Peter happened upon uh, that distracted him from the party. Uh, but he tracks down the Donald Glover character. He figures out that there's another deal going down on the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, it's then in the midst of confronting uh, the, the lackeys. He doesn't quite confront the vulture just yet. But the FBI swoop in. Turns out that Tony Stark had actually been paying attention to all of Peter's v -log, the little logs that he'd been calling in the whole time. And he was the one who tipped off the FBI. However, Peter was not aware of this. And in the midst of fighting the vulture who shows up, uh, one of the weapons discharges and severs the whole thing in half. And Iron Man basically has to come in to scoop out everything. After that, Tony Stark says, no, you're done. Give me back the costume. You clearly are not cut out for this. And... <sighs> and uh, after Tony Stark takes the costume back, Peter basically kind of returns, tries to return to his normal life. He really avoids being Spider-Man. And in the midst of all of this, uh, he get, actually gets a date with Liz to the homecoming dance. And it's then that it's not Liz Allen, who is a character from the comics that Peter kind of... It, uh, very early on in the Spider-Man comics, uh, the first few years, uh, Peter had basically kind of two women in his life. One was Liz Allen, who was the unobtainable girl in high school, and the other was Betty Brandt, who worked at the Daily Bugle. Uh, it's not Liz Allen, though, which it was everyone led to believe. It's actually Liz Toombs. She is the daughter of Adrian Toombs, the vulture. Uh, and as Peter shows up at the homecoming, uh, to pick her up for the homecoming dance, uh, he and Adrian Toombs talk a little bit, and it, Tombs is like, man, I, I kind of recognize your voice. Do I know you from somewhere? And it's, he starts kind of piecing together. I was like, I know you're Spider-Man. I said, listen, you saved Liz's life in Washington, D.C. That was your get-out-of-jail card. I won't let you go. You try nothing at this dance. You have fun, but you, know, you go no further than that. Exactly, and you don't come after me. Of course, Peter winds up ignoring this, knows he has to come after it. He basically walks out of the dance, leaving Liz alone. He and Ned then begin to work together on uh, uh, tracking down Adrian Toomes because uh, Pete left his cell phone in his car. He leaves Ned to contact Happy Hogan, who basically ignores him. Uh, anyway, along the way, Peter pieces together that to the Vulture is planning on robbing uh, basically the Stark Towers uh, supply of uh, Chitauri stuff that they were hoarding, and they're now transferring to the new uh, Avengers headquarters. Peter then uh, picks up a spare Spidey suit along the way this is happening, by the way. Um, he goes to where he's tracked Adrian Toomes down. They have another confrontation. Toomes basically says, look, they don't, you know, the Avengers don't want, sort of comparing their situations. Exactly. Damage control swept in and kept him out. The Avengers swooped, Iron Man swoops in and keeps Peter out. You're left to fight over the scraps. You, you know, the leftovers. We're not allowed to grow and actually be what we want to be. And he basically ha calls his harness the vulture harness. Uh, the vulture outfit's really kind of cool looking because it's uh, he wears sort of a bomber pilot's jacket and the mask, and then it's the harness with the wings that has kind of a a harrier like lift to it, and that's how he can fly and everything. Anyway, uh, as they're flying, as he's fight he calls the harness and starts swooping around. And Peter's dodging. It's like you're never going to get this to hit me. It's like I wasn't trying to get it to hit you. And the roof of the building there and just collapses on Peter. Uh, Toomes then goes after the plane with the uh, Chitari tech on it. Uh, Peter, you know, finally finds the hero within. Um, it's a recreation of a very famous moment from the Spider-Man comics. Uh, I think it's Spider-Man thirty-three. I know it's Steve Ditko artwork, and it's about, you know, again, Peter being trapped under a lot of debris and basically finding the strength within, finally, to just fight his way out. And he goes after Tombs. He manages to latch onto the vulture and just stay enough out of the blind spot to where Tombs really can't see him. 
Uh, they get on the plane, they start fighting. Eventually, Toombs realizes that Peters is with him as he's go on the plane. They're fighting on the plane. Uh, the plane gets badly damaged and winds up crashing near Coney Island. Uh, Toombs basically starts attacking Peter, the uh, Vulture, sorry. Uh, Vulture starts attacking Peter, they're fighting. Eventually, he gets enough of an upper hand that Toombs starts to fly off with a box of the Chitauri tech. Unfortunately, it's all the cores that have been exposed to radiation and are now explosive. And Peter tries to warn him. He's trying to pull him away. He tries to pull him away. He tries to pull him away. And the box explodes. Toombs is not killed, but he's thrown pretty fair distance. Peter does save him, but he ties him up and leaves him for the authorities to find him. Uh, afterwards, uh, it, as again, as Adrian Toombs is arrested, uh, basically, in a very smart move, uh, he tells Liz and her mother that they need to get out of town before the trial. They're, it's just going to be a media circus. It wouldn't be right to them. So they leave and move to Oregon. And uh, MJ becomes the new head of the academic decathlon team. It's then that uh, Tony Stark calls Peter and tells, hey, we need you up here. He goes to the new Avengers. He's given a new Spider-Man outfit and a spot on the Avengers but Peter actually turns it down. He wants to kind of stay alone for a while and start figuring his way out. He says, okay. Uh, he does wind up giving uh, Peter back the Spider-Man suit. Not his old Spider-Man suit. The, uh, well, the Spider-Man suit, yeah, pretty much throughout all of this. They got from Tony originally. And Peter puts it back on. He's kind of looking a little triumphant with the mask off. And then you see Aunt May standing in there and she goes, what the? And the credits roll. <laughs> Uh, and then we get a mid credit sequence. Uh, Toombs is in prison. He bumps into Matt Gargan, and Gargan says, uh, hey, listen, you know, uh, I got some guys on the outside, and they say that you actually know who Spider-Man really is. You know, they'd be very interested. They could help us. And he's like, and Toombs kind of looks at him and goes, if I knew who Spider-Man was, I'd all, he'd already be dead. So again, I think he's kind of smart. He's like, you know, you saved my life. I'm going to let you slide on this again so out of that and then we get uh, uh the end credits after that it's uh, uh throughout the film there's been these uh motivational captain america public service announcements uh there's one for uh geez uh there's one for fiad for like a physical education uh or gym class uh, you know uh the captain america fitness challenge thing it's like and actually the guy who's sort of the instructor there goes I don't know if, I'm, uh, this, if we should really be pushing this, given that he's sort of wanted by the uh, United States government right now, but uh, technically the state says, I have to show you this. Uh, and then another point, Peter's in detention, and again, they're showing a videotape of him in detention. <laughs> uh, Cap said, so, you're in detention. Hey, I know it's hard. We've all been there. <laughs> Do Again, another public service announcement. So at the end credit sequence, Captain America comes out and goes, Hey, I'm Captain America. I'd like to talk to you about patience. Don't you just hate sitting there waiting, 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 and then the payoff just doesn't seem to go off? I get it. But you need to learn patience. Sometimes things are going to disappoint you. <laughs> and that's how it all ends. So, obviously, the film is going to get an A. Um, really good performances throughout all of this. I'd say probably the only real complaints is our, uh, the Zendaya character that was so hyped is really underwritten. I would say Ned is also kind of underwritten. I would have liked to see a little bit more of an expansion with them. Um, May is also kind of underutilized. But other than that, this is really enjoyable. The action sequences are great, and the downtime between the action sequences is tight. It doesn't really drag a lot. Um, it's, you know, it's like, it feels like I'm not just getting downtime. It's like I'm getting downtime, but I'm learning too throughout all of this. Again, I would only say uh, some of the female supporting cast is a little underwritten. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I said, this is getting an A. Okay, trailer time, and uh, a lot of repeats this time again. Uh, we have Valerian, again. Uh, we then got Annabelle 2. Uh, again, one of the weirdest things. Um, 
like I I know kind of the root story behind this. I know that in the original true story, uh, the doll in question is a Raggedy Ann doll, and I guess they can't get the license to Raggedy Ann. But God, that doll looks terrible. Like again, if you want to do a creepy possessed doll story, maybe don't pick a doll that already looks creepy before it's possessed. Ugh. After that, we have Dunkirk again. Atomic Blonde, again. Yeah, by the way, Atomic Blonde and Annabelle 2. Yeah, really good movies to be showing before, you know, a film with a bunch of kids in the audience. Yeah, I mean, you have a horror movie and you have a movie with, uh, you know, that's rated R for violence and nudity. So, yeah. Uh, after that, we have Dark Tower again. And then Thor Ragnarok. Uh, I want to say we got Thor Ragnarok once before, but I can't really remember. I going to run on the assumption that we probably have. Uh, so, anyway, uh, next video up is going to be the WWE Great Balls of Fire, a.k.a. Oh My God, WWE Didn't Realize Their Logo Was a Penis review. And um, then the week after that is going to be uh, the Random Trade review on... Uh, the, the question, sorry, the 2005 question mini series. See you all then. Just a reminder, I am on Patreon now at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions. There, there's a reward tier where you can request for me to review a movie. So if you want to force me to see something like the Emoji Movie, here's your chance.